Warning. This product may cause increased altitudes, more airtime, more cross-country miles, jaw-dropping awesomeness, record-breaking flights, competition trophies, thoughts of world domination, and a large permanent grin. Use at your own risk. This is the pre-flight briefing for Practical Exercise 14, Thermal Soaring. The main purpose of this exercise is to put together everything you've learned so far to have an extended duration, multiple thermal, thermal-only soaring flight. There are a few fun firsts in this exercise. First, you'll stay in the air for one hour, which is much longer than in any previous exercise. Next, this is the first multiple thermal exercise. You'll probably work five to ten thermals during this flight. And unlike in any previous exercises, you'll choose your own thermals, which involves two important things looking around and assessing clouds. Looking around is very important so let's talk about how to look around in the condor world assuming that you have a traditional joystick and don't have a head tracking system. To pan your view which is the virtual equivalent of turning or tilting your head use your joystick's point of view switch which is a miniature thumb operated joystick of sorts on top of your joystick. To quickly return to the standard straight ahead view use the view reset function. The five key in your keyboard's numeric keypad is the default assignment for view reset but I recommend assigning this to the joystick trigger instead so that you can quickly return to a straight ahead view without removing your hand from the joystick and without needing your other hand. To switch to external view, which is a view looking at yourself from outside the glider, press F2. In addition to looking around to find the next thermal, it can be educational to use external view to look back at any cloud you leave thinking that the thermal is dying. Doing this will help you learn to better judge when a thermal you're in is dying. And to return to normal view, called cockpit view, press F1. You'll start this flight 760 meters, or 2,500 feet, above the ground, and from there we'll have to find and work each thermal on your own. Keep an eye on the sky as you circle and as you glide. Always be prepared for your current thermal, or the cloud you're flying toward, to start dying at any moment. To be prepared for this, you must always have your next destination chosen too, a destination which in this case will be a cloud. Climb as quickly as you can in each thermal, leaving enough mental bandwidth, of course, to scan the sky and have your next cloud chosen at all times. And as soon as you reach the top of a thermal, move on. This exercise is largely about finding and using multiple thermals so don't loiter at the top of any thermal. Now let's look at a typical thermal and cloud life cycle so you can have an idea of what to expect based on the current look of a given cloud or the change in a cloud's appearance over time. The winds are calm here so our thermal of interest, the one that will touch the ground where pointed to by this arrow, won't drift out of view. In the beginning, there's a thermal with no cloud. When the cloud first starts forming, it's very small, but it grows fairly quickly. After the cloud stops growing, it spends some time at a more or less constant size, simulating the rate of new moisture entering the cloud, roughly equaling the rate of moisture in the cloud evaporating. Then as the bottom of the thermal column approaches cloud base, the cloud starts disintegrating and eventually completely disappears. Reality isn't always this tidy, but this example still serves as a good enough basic model to be useful. 
You're not quite ready to go cross country, so stay inside the large circle or cylinder shown on your PDA. This cylinder's radius is about 9 kilometers or 5 nautical miles, which gives you a total playground area of 270 square kilometers or 80 square nautical miles. This cylinder goes from the ground to higher than you could possibly climb, so the only way you could exit the cylinder is through its side. There's wind, so be careful not to drift out of the cylinder while circling. If you exit the start cylinder, you'll hear a brief alert sound and see a started task message near the lower left corner of the screen. This doesn't mean that you automatically fail the exercise, but it will earn you a substantial penalty. The penalty is a deduction from your total air time, which just means that you'll need to stay aloft for extra time for each time you exit the cylinder. Also, you'll get an extra time penalty for every full minute you spend outside the cylinder. So if you ever exit the cylinder, get back inside it in less than a minute to avoid another penalty. Now let's talk a little more about the start sector on the Condor PDA map. While in this exercise it's circular or cylindrical, it can be other shapes. So we'll generically refer to it as a start sector. The sector is filled with a diagonal hatch pattern. During the first minute of this exercise it will be red. After that it will be green. Red means that the start window or the time period during which a glider can start the race isn't yet open. Green means that the start window has opened. This exercise is not a race, but Condor requires every flight to be set up as if it is a race. At the start sector edge is a slightly thicker, lighter colored line, red if the start window hasn't yet opened, green if it has, and in case you want to get really close to the edge of the start sector, it's important to know that the center of the glider icon is treated as your position. So in this screenshot, you're outside the start sector. Flying a glider into a cloud is illegal in some countries, including the U.S., and whether it's legal or not, it's pretty risky. You could collide with another aircraft, or you could become disoriented, assume extreme attitudes, and damage your glider. Either of these outcomes could cost you your life. So stay out of the clouds. If you enter a cloud in this exercise, you'll hear a brief alert sound and will see an entered cloud message near the lower left corner of the screen. If you enter a cloud, then as a penalty, immediately deploy full spoilers circle down to a certain altitude, retract spoilers, and then head to your next cloud without working this thermal anymore. After the flight, you'll use flight analysis to double check your ending altitude and whether you ever got outside the start cylinder. You may also want to look at things like how many thermals you worked, how many times you changed destinations while on glide, and how many search patterns you flew, how well you flew them, and whether they paid off. To pass this exercise, you must stay aloft for at least an hour, stay in the start cylinder, stay out of clouds, in the flight above a certain altitude, and never work the same cloud twice in a row. One of the main purposes of this exercise is to practice finding thermals. So once you leave one, go find another one. If you violate any of these last four requirements, then you must pay the associated penalties. You may combine any two flights to pass this exercise. For example, if you stay aloft exactly 60 minutes but have 10 minutes worth of penalties, then to pass, you simply need to fly the exercise again for just long enough to accrue 10 minutes of air time, after deducting any penalty minutes from that flight, of course. 
If you realize during a flight that you earned a time penalty, then feel free to extend the duration of that flight in order to pass the exercise in a single flight. And here are some things you're encouraged to do during the flight, but that won't affect whether you pass the exercise. First, try to find at least one thermal using the search pattern you learned and practiced in earlier exercises. The odds are good that during this flight, you'll pass by at least one thermal near enough to hear its effect in the Vario, but not near enough for the Vario to beep. Next, whenever your climb rate diminishes significantly in a thermal, and you believe that you're still well centered, there's a good chance that the thermal is dying. So leave the thermal, switch to external view, and look back at the cloud to see whether it's indeed dying. If it doesn't appear to be dying yet, then take another look in a couple of minutes. And finally, to try to keep from developing a turn direction preference, alternate your turn direction from thermal to thermal. If you currently have a turn direction preference, then instead of alternating turn direction, just turn opposite your preferred direction in every thermal until you feel equally comfortable turning that direction. This concludes the pre-flight briefing for practical exercise 14, thermal soaring. Relax, have fun, and good luck.